My wife Bernice wishes I get dressed up more often. But when it comes to wearing a suit, I'm kind of like the CEO. C for Christmas, E for Easter, O for obituary. <laughs> maybe a lot of you guys aren't like me. Maybe you got a job or a strict wife, or maybe you care about your appearance. I can't do anything about that. But what I can do is show you a cheap way to dry clean your clothes using your own furnace. So you know this here? This is the heat chamber where all the air goes through. Now before you toss the suit in there, you want to really shock the air freshener to it. Because let's face it, people are a lot more concerned with how you smell than how you look. And then you wrap the whole thing around the aerosol can. I'll explain what that's for later. Okay, now you just stick the panel back on there. That'll take care of our air movement and our deodorizing. But to get any cleaning done, we're gonna have to introduce some chemicals into the mix. Like say, carbon tetrachloride. You can get this from any hardware store. <coughs> In the no smoking section. <coughs> Just soak your filter <coughs> with this stuff. <coughs> then when the furnace fan kicks on, <coughs> the cleaner will be effectively applied to the garments. <coughs> you know this stuff's pretty toxic, so when you soak the filter, make sure you do it in a, well, ventilator. Boy, I had a bit of a nap there, and talk about dreams. I dreamt I was riding a big striped elephant wearing a purple satin moo. Okay, now to get the suit clean, okay, what you do is you turn the fan switch to the on position, which will kind of get the air moving around without turning the furnace on. You let that go for about 10 minutes, and then to get the suit back, you turn up the thermostat. The furnace lights up, and as soon as your furnace gets hot, that aerosol can is going to flatten the wrinkles, fill your clothes with a lovely dry cleaning fragrance, and give you free delivery. Oh, boy. this week one of those TV reality shows is coming here can you believe that <laughs> I figured Possum Lake could be the last place on earth for reality to set in <laughs> I don't even know what show it is probably homebrew survivor <laughs> or maybe who wants to marry stinky Peterson <laughs> what's from the mail I'll never fail I ain't seen nothing yet. No argument here. So, you think I have a chance? Don't ever ask me things like that. <laughs> well, I do. I'm auditioning for that reality show. <laughs> oh, yeah? What is it, Dorks on Ice? <laughs> no, it's Singing Sensations. And the winner gets a recording contract and a check for $100,000. <laughs> Holy cow, Harold. You know what? You should do this. I am doing it. Yeah, see, that's good advice. And as your advisor, I think I deserve 10% of the 100 grand. Okay. $100. Okay. Harold, 10% of 100 grand is not $100, all right? It's 1,000. <laughs> this coupon to the Port Asbestos Little Theater play about two mismatched Nova Scotia fishermen forced to live in the same boathouse. <laughs> Don't miss the cod couple. <laughs> All right, cover your ears there, Mike. Fred, you got 30 seconds to get Mike Hammer to say this word. A choir. A choir. Yeah, all right, Winston. And go! Uh, okay, Mike, this is how you get stuff. Shoplifting? <laughs> Okay, when you get something that you didn't have before, that means you... Slept in a sheep motel? No, uh, okay. 
When your dad passes his genes on to you, you blank them. Sterilize them. <laughs> okay, now let's go a different way here. Um, this is a place where you sing. Uh, the shower. No, 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 no. Actually, you perform with a whole lot of people. Oh, uh, the prison shower. <laughs> No, 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 Mike. Your, your mother sang in one of these. A topless band. <laughs> that was a real tough gig for the accordion player. Yeah, uh, Red, you're almost out of time here. Yeah, uh, okay, Mike, when rich people pay a lot of money for something, you always hear this word. Oh, caviar. <laughs> you know that's just fish eggs? I guess you could acquire a taste for it. There we go. your glue stick and run with your scissors down to Harold's Hobby House. <laughs> Join me as we explore the exciting world of extreme hobbies. My guest today, Mr. Glenn Braxton, formerly of the Braxton Marina. <laughs> Want to stand up, Glenn, so people could recognize you. Oh, I think they can recognize me better sitting down, Harold. <laughs> I'd prefer if you stood up. Really? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Glenn has a fascinating hobby. He has an extensive collection of teacups and coffee mugs, and I'm told they're from throughout the country, and some date back to the 17th century. <laughs> well, that's not exactly right, Harold. Uh, there's no teacups. No teacups? No. Just coffee mugs? Coffee mugs are exciting. Yeah. It's a lot of fun, uh, actually. Uh, it doesn't require a lot of work, which is the big plus. <laughs> <laughs> Those are paper coffee cups. Yeah, well, it's just a sample. The complete collection is in the back seat of my car. <laughs> you said something about them dating back to the 17th century? No, no, I meant my car. It's, uh, <laughs> it's my 17th Buick Century. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, I love the Buick Century. It's got the reclining seats to go on. Uh, Glenn, Glenn, what would ever, uh, you know, propel you to start collecting paper coffee cups? Well, uh, I guess it was the drive-thru. Yeah, after, go <laughs> after going there for a few months, uh, the wife got on my back about cleaning out the back seat of my car. So I got this brainstorm. I thought, I'll tell her it's a collection. Well, the thing is, it turned out I enjoyed it after a while. Well, actually, I enjoyed it more than cleaning out the back seat of my car. You know, it's funny, because I think collecting paper cups would become kind of limiting. Well, no, they're not just, co they're not just coffee cups, Harold. No, no. See, that's right. That's a double-double. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> Decaf. Ah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. Coffee? Latte. Latte. Yeah, cool to everybody. You hear a lot of talk these days about fossil fuels and how the depletion of the rainforest is melting the icebergs and drowning all the whales. So now they got a whole bunch of engineers trying to make cars out of recycled styrofoam cups and gasoline out of cow pads. <laughs> but you know, sometimes when you can't find the answer looking forward, you should look back. Back in time. This clock stood in the Possum Lake Town Square for 75 years. Then last summer, they got a grant to spruce up downtown, so they put up some spruce and tore down the clock. <laughs> now they got a big digital one on top of City Hall. People driving by think it's the price of gas. <laughs> Probably because it goes up every minute. <laughs> you know, this clock is kind of like the ideal lodge member. Strong, dependable, and you only have to wind it up once a year. <laughs> they say the whole world is looking for a cheap, reusable, environmentally friendly fuel. Well, I got the key. <laughs> Got the clock mounted and connected to the drivetrain. You know, a clock is really just a bunch of gears. So I went to the highest gear to get the maximum horsepower, and I ran a long bicycle chain around it, through the sunroof, and down through the floor of the car, and hooked it around another sprocket that I duct taped to my drive shaft. You know, I didn't even have to cut a hole in the floorboards. That's the beauty of using an older vehicle. Now, I needed a pendulum to make the clock work. The original one was about 10 feet long. I didn't have that kind of room. So I just added some horseshoes to a pickaxe. That should make the clock work fine. People always said I had horseshoes up my something. They just had the location wrong. All right, let's.
Let's see how our new engine works. I only have to do that once a year. So I sound like Dalton's wife. Anyway, I see by the big clock on my roof that it's time to take this baby for a spin. So remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Now, if you excuse me, I gotta go save the planet. wedding over the weekend and I saw some beautiful sights. The bride, the flowers, the open bar. <laughs> but there was one sight that was less welcome. That was when dinner ended and the DJ started and a bunch of middle-aged guys started shaking what was left of their booty on the dance floor. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> now, just in case you think I'm being a wet blanket, let me be clear. If you're the father of the bride and you dance with your daughter, that's a moment to remember. Likewise, if you're a guest and your wife wants to dance with you to Moon River, get out there and do that little rockin' two-step that hasn't let you down since the seventh grade. <laughs> but I'm talking about the fast songs. You've let your body go. <laughs> Don't do the mashed potato. You are the mashed potato. <laughs> You can't do the locomotion if your engine is only half the size of your caboose. <laughs> Those aren't strobe lights, that's you passing out. <laughs> now I know there's always gonna be at least one guy who gets a couple of drinks in him and ignores my advice. That's when you need to do the right thing. Just get a couple of paramedics to walk over, tap them on the shoulder and quietly say, maybe you should just sit this one out, Mr. Green. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Well, today's the big day. Harold's gone down to the community center to audition for that Singing Sensations TV show along with almost everybody in town. Moose Thompson didn't go. I believe he has a deal with another network. <laughs> All-star battle of the giant freaks of nature. <laughs> but I gotta figure Harold didn't do so well, so. I should probably be nice to him. I hate this. <laughs> Yo, Doug, Errol's in the house. <laughs> what up, G? <laughs> what did he say? Uh, <clears throat> uh, he's saying, um... Uh, oh, he, he wants to know how you are. Worried. That's for real, Mr. Green. Uh, Harold made it into the semi-quarter, semi-finals of Singing Sensation. It's gonna be on TV! Uh, so we really gotta pitch in for t uh, tomorrow night for the, the next round. Yeah, yeah, Uncle Brad, because I need all you guys to phone in, okay? Because you got to phone in and vote for me. That way, I get to go to the next round and I can beat that eight-year-old girl from Port Asbestos. <laughs> no, I, you know, I can't, I can't do it, uh, not tomorrow night, because I'm going down in the arena to buy tickets for the Monster Truck Rally. Sorry. Uncle Brad, I think my singing career is a little more important than Monster Trucks. Okay, Harold, I know you're excited right now, so I'm going to let that go. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, Harold. Forget the monster trucks. I'll do the phone in. Thing. Oh, that's good. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That's great. Come on, Mike. Come on. This is great. This is great. Cost 10 bucks to launch your boat at the Possum Lake boat ramp, which is fine, but 
The worst part is they have an attendant to actually make sure you pay. <laughs> so as a result, uh, he's not all that busy, as a rule. <laughs> now, now, we're there and we have boats, but we're waiting for a certain time. <laughs> Usually around now would be lunchtime. And this is a man who doesn't skip meals. So we figure as soon as he clears the area, we got 30 minutes to get our boats launched. And that's when the fun begins. Now I got the V8, so I'm the first one down there with the possum pad. Walter stuck his boat on top of his car pointing down so you can hardly see where he's going. And I start her down there, but sometimes we're in a hurry, you know, you get a little... Walter's a bit lost there, and, uh, and Bill just stuck the canoe on top there. So I'm trying, no, 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 one more time, no, back, no, 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 cut her right, cut her right, cut her right, not that, not that, not that, oh. It's a little frustrating. And uh, so Bill is again working his way through, and she gets turned sideways, and uh, well, you can see what's coming here. So now Bill pulls up in front of me, he's upset because I'm uh, taking up the whole uh, ramp, and he's saying he wants to launch his canoe, to which I say, what canoe? <laughs> realize that he's uh, up the creek without a canoe, actually, at this point. So he goes back to get his canoe on there. Meanwhile, Walter's having problems uh, with visibility, so he figures what he should do probably is back up and use the side mirror. He's got a clear view there. And, you know, in theory, I mean, it's, it's not a bad plan, but in practice, not so good. So now he's lost his mirror, so now he pulls ahead to, to pick up the mirror, uh, not realizing Bill is kind of driving around in the same area. So now Bill has uh, duct taped the canoe right on there and he throws the anchor uh, inside up at the bow end and uh, he's okay, he's good to go. So uh, he takes off with that unit and uh, meanwhile uh, Walter is uh, driving all over the place too and so am I trying to get my boat launched. But Bill doesn't realize there's a bit of a ramp on the side of the road and that tends to fire the anchor out. He winds around a tree which pulls the canoe sideways and well, that's the name of that tent. Meanwhile, I'm coming down the thing, Walter bangs into me, Bill slams into him. Before you know it, uh, everything is going down the boat ramp. Okay, that didn't work out perfectly, but I like to put a positive spin on things, so I'm figuring, yeah, okay, it cost us 10 bucks each, but we launched more than our boats. We launched our vehicles. <laughs> like PBS, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, Harold's debut was tonight on the big TV singing show, and we've been trying to vote for him for about an hour, but the lines are always busy. And there's no redial button on these phones that Dalton gave us. In fact, there's no buttons at all. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 I'm getting through. Yeah, uh, yeah hello, yes, uh, I want to place a vote for uh, Harold Green. What? Oh. I'm, I'm sorry. No, 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 wait. I'll order a double cheese, hold the anchovies. Uh, uh, yes, uh, a vote for Hal Green, please? It's me, you idiot. Dad? Hello. Oh, hello, oh, hello, yes, Harold Green. No, 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 he's, he, he's the one with the teeth. <laughs> what? what? What do you mean he wasn't on the show? W wasn't Harold on the show? I didn't watch. It reminds me of work. <laughs> oh. Harold! How, how'd, how'd it go? What happened? Well, all those people watching me? I got stage fright and I didn't go on. <laughs> but Harold, you're on our show all the time. Yeah, but this time there's gonna be women watching. <laughs> Pressure was just too much. Pressure was too much. You know what? I think maybe we should stop phoning in. Yeah, but they gave me a prize for participating. I got five tickets to the Monster Truck Rally. Wow! Oh. Yeah. You got a prize for not singing? I can see the logic. Well, because you all phoned in for me, you know I want to give you each a ticket. Oh, boy. Hey. Here, I'll go red. Hey, thanks, Harold. Boy, these, these seats are pretty high. 
Well, you can see the show from there. I can see my house from there. Meeting <laughs> <laughs> oh, time. Yeah, you guys go ahead. Uh, I'll, I'll be right down. Thanks again, Harold. Uh, so if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. Got great news. It's okay with me if you invite your parents over for the evening on uh, November 23rd. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I'm half myself and Harold and the whole gang. I'm here, boss man. Keep it sticking on the ice. had a pretty big uh, day here. Uh, he realized he was in a no-win situation, and he had the good sense to give up. <laughs> he may get married yet. <laughs> but I'd like to just have a small round of applause for Harold. <laughs> and uh, I believe Harold uh, had a few words. Yes, yes. Um, I want to thank all my fans and how, you know sticking close to me and so on, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to abandon my singing career. Yes! 